All right, so this is my Titans Season 4, Episode 4 review. Yes, Episode 4. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so I'll start with the flashbacks, because that's what they started with. So, May Bennett seems to be a nor seemingly normal-ish person, except for the fact that she has magic. Which she just nonchalantly uses to make the plants perk up, to fix the copier, and make the guy look like he did it. But the boss isn't happy with her for some reason. And, um, she, so he, when he goes back and he starts berating her in front of someone there was someone in the in the office with him and he's berating her and obviously she hears it because it's loud enough <clears throat> and she proceeds to kill him now we don't see exactly how she does it but she does it so then we see her at a coffee shop and um a man meets up with her and gives her a card for the organization. Then that they're looking for someone with special abilities to help them hone them. <clears throat> so, and she knows exactly what this person means because she goes, what if that person's abilities are, um, I can't remember the word she is, but basically erratic. <clears throat> And, um, he said no problem. So, she knew exactly what was going, well, not exactly what was going on, but she knew what he was talking about. And he has her say the three words that she was going to make Sebastian say. And, um, so then there's a time jump. She's at the organization and she's going to get to meet Trigon. Because let's face it, we know that it's Trigon. It's the organization. We know that that's who it is. And he wants to meet May and um, I guess her name, her friend's name is Gina. Whether it really is, God knows at this point. But so she wants to he they meet um, <clears throat> let's see, then there's a bunch of time jumps. They're sitting, um, talking, May and her friend, um, then there's a scene where they all are supposed to fall back and trust the Trigon is going to catch them. So much for the, um, the... This only is happening to you, too, that Trigon doesn't say this to all the girls. Because, yeah, he says it to all the girls. And, um, so Gina looked like she wanted to take the power for herself. And so she knocks May down. May comes back when she's all cleaned up and dressed and looks like there's going to be a wedding. And she's super pissed. I honestly thought she was going to kill Gina. Obviously, she's the same girl that we saw um, meet with Sebastian, you know, and say that she's sorry about his mother. So we knew that she wasn't going to die, but I honestly thought that she was going to try. So the same man comes in and... Um, congratulates May on having, having heart. So, and Gina seemed pretty cool about the fact that she was offered a goblet. Which I assume is how she got pregnant because she immediately grabs her stomach. Well, her abdomen, but. <clears throat> so, I guess that's how she got pregnant. And then we hear through tapes and see that 
um, she gave birth to a boy. So they find out that Rachel and Sebastian are siblings, half siblings, but still siblings. That they're both the children of Trigon. And um, that the prophecy is that the chosen one is supposed to be a girl, meaning Rachel. So they don't want it to have anything to do with Sebastian. And, um, of course, is they put May in an asylum. And unlike Angela, who seemed to be, well, not insane, she seemed to be having a hard time with the fact that her baby was taken away, which can't say I blame her. Which makes me wonder if a similar thing happened to Angela, and that's why she was being kept at the asylum as well. But Rachel was supposed to be the chosen one, and in season one, she sent Rachel to be raised by her sister. So, obviously, that can't be it. So... But Corey figures out that even before all of this, that things are sound are feeling rather similar. But anyway, so that's what we get through flashbacks. So Rachel, Rachel, Dick, Corey, all of them are trying to figure out what is happening with Sebastian. He, Rachel talks to him and he starts saying the three words and she stops him because she knows exactly what's happening. This is Trigon. So they're in the RV and um, Rachel and them are giving Jinx and Tim the Cliff Notes version of season one and their um, fight with Trigon. Know who Trigon is, why Corey came to came to Earth, and Corey was so it was trying to be so nice and say, "Oh yeah, I came to kill Trigon." And Rachel's like, "No, you came to kill me." And Corey's like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> I thought we were over this. We are, but it's the truth." So. So, Sebastian, when he hears the name Trigon, seemed very determined. You know, who's Trigon? You know, he wasn't the scared, this is all creeping me out type. He was very concerned. You know, he was very um, determined to find out what's happening. And it's like he was a different person. Just like when um, Mother Mayhem was trying to get him to tell him, you know, say the words. And so I was right, and I'm sure this wasn't a shock to anybody, that she is his mother, his birth mother. Um, so they go to the asylum. Which is now a super supermart, but it doesn't show up on Dick's D GPS. And there's a whole bunch of ravens flying over, which I saw that as a nod to Rachel, because that is her superhero name, is Raven. Now, considering who who concoct all this i don't think that um well maybe it was meant to mock rachel who knows <clears throat> so sebastian goes with them he's determined to find out what's happening he sh finds a picture of mother mayhem and um gina and he points out that Gina was his neighbor across the hall. So it's not that he was visiting his mother. He, he lived with his mother. And so obviously they were monitoring him for a while. And um, 
So then they listen to the tapes. They find out that he's the boy in the book. And um, they're trying to figure out what they want with him. Especially since he's not supposed to be the chosen one. Rachel is. Um, and so then a bunch of zombies show up, of course, being controlled by Mother Mayhem. And so Connor <laughs> takes on like a whole, like three or four of them by himself. And Jinx finally is like, you need to cut off their heads. Okay. So... Rachel proceeds to do that with a chainsaw, and I'm sorry, but if they have to do that for every one of that mob, they will be there forever, because that took a long time. Um, so they manage, Jinx freezes them, so they manage to escape. And I, I was waiting for when somebody was going to be like, you couldn't have done this sooner. But before they could, she, Jinx did say that she can't hold them for long. <clears throat> and um, so they run out only to be greeted by zombie Deathstroke. So Connor wants, wants a shot at Deathstroke. Okay, fine. And he punches off his head, which was awesome. And Connor, and I mean Connor, Tim and Gar agreed. And um, then Deathstroke just goes, picks up his head, puts it back on, and stabs Connor in the stomach. And everybody's like, I didn't think you could bleed. Neither did I. Guys, he's only half Kryptonian. Why do you think this? Yes, Superman is his father, but so is Lex. But anyway. So, at some point during the melee, um, Dick used a smoke screen, quite literally, and then starts fighting Deathstroke. And he and Deathstroke ends up winning. And Connor, why do I keep saying Connor? Dick is just watching him walk away. So obviously he knew what was going to happen next, or at least that Sebastian wasn't Sebastian. So he grabs Sebastian, puts him in the, grabs Sebastian, puts him in the back of the van. And Jinx is like, I didn't know zombies could drive. <laughs> So, yes, he, she's still like Sebastian, but voice of Jinx, which was, which made it so funny. And, um, she was priding herself on how well she did the face and body of Sebastian. So, she takes care of Deathstroke and then takes his gun. Because, of course, she did. Actually, that makes good sense. So, Mother Mayhem is upset, and Gar has been monitoring the moon, and he says, we just have to keep him for eight hours, and then the blood moon will have expired, and we're safe. Okay, fine. So, they decide to take him to Star Labs to, um... To keep him there where it's going where he's going to be safe in theory. And um now she said come to me. Mother Mayhem during the fight said, Come to me, Superboy, and that the Tamarin is going to play her part even if she doesn't like it. So um Connor gets there. Bernard is telling Tim they tried texting him. And um, so Connor decides that he's going to throw up. 
So he leaves. He um, makes a show of it saying, oh yeah, I'm just going to clean this up. He throws up. Throws up blood and he throws up a snake. Not nearly as big of a snake as what Lex Luthor or anyone else was vomiting. <laughs> this was more like a garden snake compared to that. And, um, but he doesn't tell anyone. Everyone, you know, Gar asks, are you okay? He's like, oh yeah, I'm good. Why? Why not? There's enough drama with Mother Mayhem trying to steal back her son. We don't need him to, to lie about what's happened to him. So, that was annoying. But that's how it ends. Rachel is hanging out with Sebastian. And, um, I guess they're, you know, she wants to catch up with a family member who, at this point, is her only family. By blood, anyway. You know, that both their fathers are Dragon. So, um, it ends with Connor looking at them and then walking away. Which, it's like, what the hell? What's going on with that? But, the next episode is called Inside Man. So, I wonder if Connor turns on them and delivers Sebastian to Mother Man. Because that's just weird that Mother Mayhem wanted to do this. She wanted to put a serpent inside him. So I still don't understand the purpose of the serpent. But so the episode description reads, The Titans are determined to keep Sebastian within the walls of Star Labs. Connor's hidden injury gives rise to an unexpected threat. So like I said, I wonder if he doesn't turn on the Titans. Possibly not willingly because we are talking the occult. And this episode spent a lot of time um, with Jinx prodding Connor for having a magic phobia. Because Superman in the comics doesn't do well with magic. That's his weakness. So it's assumed that it's Connor's as well. And Connor's like, uh, no. Because people keep forgetting that he's also Lex Luthor's son. They only remember that when something, when he does something diabolical or science related. It's like, Superman is not an idiot. <sighs> so, anyway, my theory is that Connor somehow either attacks the Titans or somehow delivers Sebastian to Mother Mayhem. But, yeah, he's a mole, and only because of the occult, <clears throat> and has something to do with the serpent. I honestly have no idea how this works. I don't think we'll ever find out how this works, but that's my theory. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything that happened this episode. Um, I don't believe so. So I will see you guys next time.